Now that you know what a container concept is, let's look at what a container is technically. So technically, a container is made up of images. So we have layers of stacked images on top of each other. And at the base of most of the containers, you would have a Linux based image, which is either Alpine with a specific version, or it could be some other Linux distribution. And it's important for those base images to be small. That's why most of them are actually Alpine because that will make sure that the containers stay small in size, which is one of the advantages of using a container. So on top of the base image, you would have application image. And this is a simplified diagram. Usually you would have these intermediate images that will lead up to the actual application, application image that is gonna run in the container. And of course, on top of that, you'll have all this configuration data. So now I think it's time to dive into a practical example of how you can actually use a Docker container and how it looks like when you install it and download it and run it on your local machine. So to give you a bit of an idea of how this works, uh, let's head over to Docker Hub and search for PostgreSQL. So here, which is a Docker official image, I can see some of the versions and let's say I'm looking specifically for older version, I don't know, nine, six, something. So I'm going to pull that one. So this is a Docker repository so that I can actually go ahead and pull the image, pull the containers from that repository directly. And because it's a public repository, I don't have to log into it. I don't have to provide any authentication credentials or anything. I can just get started with a simple Docker command without doing or configuring anything to access Docker Hub. So on my terminal, I can just do Docker pull. I can even do Docker run and then just copy the, the image name. And if I don't specify any version, it will just give me the latest, but I want a specific version. So I'm just, I'm going to go with 9.6 actually, just to demonstrate. So I can provide the version like this with a column and I can start run. So as you see, the first line says unable to find image locally. So it knows that it has to go to Docker Hub and pull it from there. And the next line says pulling from library Postgres. And here you see a lot of hashes that says downloading. And the this is what I mentioned earlier, which is Docker containers or any containers are made up of layers, right? You have the Linux image layer, you have the application layers and so on. So what, what you see here are actually all those layers that are separately downloading from the Docker Hub on my machine, right? And each one is the, the, the advantage of splitting those applications in layers is that actually, for example, if the image changes or I have to download a newer version of Postgres, what happens is that the layers, they're the same between those two applications, two versions of Postgres will not be downloaded again but only those layers that are different. So for example, now it's going to take um, uh, around 10 or 15 minutes to download this uh, one image because I don't have any Postgres locally. But if I were to download the next version, I it will take a little bit less time because some layers already exist on my local machine. So now you see that it's already logging because this command that I ran here, the Docker run with the container name and version, it fetches or it pulls the, the container, but it also starts it. So it executes the start script right away as soon as it downloads it. And here you see the output of the starting of the application. So it just gives some output about um, starting the server and doing some configuration stuff. And here you see database system is ready to accept connections and launch is started. So now let's open the new tab and see 
with docker ps command you can actually see all the running containers so here you see that postgres 96 is running and it actually says image so this is another important thing to understand when we're talking about containers there are two def two technical terms image and a container and a lot of people confuse those two uh, uh, i think and there is actually a very easy distinction between the two image is the actual packaging so we actually saw in one of the previous slides so image is the actual package that we saw in one of those previous slides so the application package together with the configuration and the dependencies and all these things this is actually the artifact that is movable around is actually the image um, container is when i pull that image on my local machine and i actually start it so the application inside actually starts that creates the container environment so if it's not running, basically it's an image, it's just an artifact that's lying around. If I start it and actually run it on my machine, it is a container. So that is the distinction. So here it says the active running containers with a container ID, image that it's running from, and some entry commands that it executed and some other status information. So this means that PostgreSQL is now running on my local machine. Simple as that. If I were now to uh, need, let's say, another version of Postgres to run at the same time on my local machine, I could just go ahead and say, let's go back. And let's say I want to have 9.6 and 10.10 10 running at the same time on my local machine. I would just do run Postgres. and run again it doesn't find it locally so it pushes and this is what i actually explained to you earlier because it's the same application but with just a different version some of the layers of the image are the same so i don't have to fetch those again because they are already on my machine and it just fetches the layers that are different so that saves a little bit of uh, time and I think it's it could be uh, actually a good advantage. So now we'll wait for other image image layers to load so that we have the second Postgres version running. And now you see I have Postgres 9.6 running in this uh, command line tab and I have Postgres version 10.10 .10 running in the next one. So I have two Postgreses with different versions running and I can actually output them here, both of them running and there's no conflict between those two. Like I can actually run any number of applications with different versions maybe of the same application with no problem at all. And we are gonna go through um, the how to use those containers in your application and the port configuration and some of the other configuration stuff later in this tutorial when we do a deep dive but this is just for you to get the first uh, visual image of how docker containers actually work how they look like and how easily you can actually start them on your local machine without having to implement uh, a specific version of postgres application and do all the configuration yourself Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful and if it was, don't forget to like it. This is a video series, so I will create a new one every week. So if you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.